Hello, today's video is about nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion and how it works. But what we're going to do before we look at that is do a quick recap on our previous video, which was about nuclear fission, nuclear fission. Now, the key points that we had about that was that we had a large unstable nucleus of either uranium or plutonium, which absorbs a neutron. The nucleus splits into two smaller nuclei about of about the same size and then we have energy released and we have gamma rays emitted as well. We also had the production of two or three neutrons which could go on to uh, create what we call our chain reaction. Okay, so something like this in an exam would typically be worth four marks or could be worth, worth up to four marks. Very important that we talk about the idea of a nucleus absorbing a neutron or splitting and not the atom because it's the nucleus that does that and not the atom. Uh, the, neutron, the word neutron is often underlined in mark schemes as well, so that's a very important key term. We had a diagram that looked something like this, and we said that you should be able to do at least two levels of a nuclear fission reaction. But that's a recap from the last video. You can go back and have a look if you're not sure. For today, we're looking at nuclear fusion, and this is the joining of two light nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. And remember, we're talking about nuclei and nucleuses, or sorry, a nucleus and nuclei, and not the atom itself. And very interestingly, some of the mass may be converted into the energy of radiation. Mass can actually be converted into energy, and you can use the word converted here when we're talking about energy. Usually we talk about energy transfers, but here we've got mass being converted into energy. What's quite interesting though, if we have a small nucleus of mass X, so we've got a nucleus of mass X, if we have fusion with another nucleus of the same mass, of mass X as well, so we get nuclear fusion, and they fuse together, we get the release of lots of energy and the energy of radiation, but if we look at the mass of the nucleus that's formed, the mass is actually a little bit less than 2x, which seems a little strange, but strange things happen when we talk about nuclear radiation. So here is a diagram of what you might see when we're talking about nuclear fusion. So at the top there, we've got a nucleus and one at the bottom as well. These are both hydrogen isotopes, isotopes of hydrogen, but it's only the nucleus, remember, not the whole atom. If you want to be fancy, the top one's called deuterium with its one neutron, and the bottom one is called tritium with its two neutrons, but that's not the key and important point. The key and important point is that we've got two isotopes, and we know they're both hydrogen because they have one proton, but we know they're isotopes because they have different numbers of neutrons. Now, these can, under the right conditions, can fuse together, forming or causing our fusion reaction, and at the end of this, we have some products. So this is one example of a fusion reaction. And in this case, one of the products is a helium nucleus, a helium nucleus, and a neutron. But also, as we said, quite importantly, we have some of the mass, a small percentage of the mass, I think it's on average about 0.7%, is converted into the energy of radiation. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to memorize this diagram, but this is something you might see uh, in a question and you might be asked a couple of questions about it. To, and, this, and this represents a nuclear fusion. Now, what we need to just quickly do before we end the video is to look at some of the key points. So the first one there we haven't mentioned yet, but it's quite an uh, important one to measure. To mention, remember, nuclei are positively charged. So that means they repel each other. They repel each other because they are all positively charged, they have protons and neutrons, and because they're positively charged we need very high temperatures and pressure to make them fuse together because they naturally repel each other. This happens naturally in the center of the Sun, and the Sun being a star means that it happens at the center of the Sun but also all stars as well. And in fact maybe we should say all main sequence stars. But this is, this is where this happens naturally. Uh, the key point is, though, a lot of energy is released when it happens. So, how could that possibly be useful to people? Well, if we could make a nuclear fusion reactor, as opposed to a nuclear fission reactor, there's a couple of advantages, apart from the fact that we have large amounts of energy released. The first advantage is that we have a lot less waste. So there's no or less nuclear waste. In a fission reactor, there's lots of nuclear waste that has to be carefully gotten rid of, but not in a fusion reactor. The main waste product would be helium nuclei, unreact unradioactive helium nuclei. And the second point about this is that the raw materials, i.e. the hydrogen isotopes, are very e easily available. 
in fact found quite easily in seawater. But we have a problem because while we have those two advantages we still need very high temperatures and pressure to make the fusion reaction happen and at the moment it's not possible. We can make nuclear fusion happen but currently the amount of energy needed to make fusion happen is more than the energy that is released so obviously that's not going to work very well for a nuclear reactor to make electricity. Okay, so these are the key points about nuclear fusion. Please do make sure you uh, make a note of it and make sure you understand it. But other than that, that's me done for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.